Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wiryawan and today I want to talk about my camera gears, my micro focus cameras and lenses that I brought with me to my Iceland trip. Let's go! Now before we continue with today's video, if you are a current subscriber of my channel, welcome back and I hope that you will enjoy today's video and also thank you always for your support for my channel. If you're a new viewer of my channel, also welcome. I hope that you will enjoy today's video. In this channel, I talk about micro photos, cameras, lenses, photography, filmmaking, as well as music, home recording, rock metal, guitar, that kind of stuff. So if you are into those kind of things, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And now let's continue with today's video. So a few days ago, I just went back with my wife from a trip to Iceland. It's been really a wonderful trip so far and I've really enjoyed the trip. My wife also enjoyed the trip. We we're able to see so many things during our trip in Iceland and uh, mostly all of the landscape stuff is just incredible. I really enjoy Iceland. And if you want to learn more about my trip to Iceland, I made some vlogs from my travel and you can watch it. Here, I made a playlist, you can check it out on the card above. And now I want to talk about my camera gears, specifically my micro footage camera and lenses, as well as some other types of uh, camera devices that I brought to Iceland. Which one works and which one doesn't, so that by the end of this video, uh, you'll be able to decide what kind of camera gear and lenses that you need for your Iceland trip. Before I talk about the gear themselves, I just want to say that Iceland is a nature-oriented destination, meaning that you will encounter a lot of different kinds of landscape and also potentially some wildlife, depending on what you're trying to do right there. So uh, your choices of camera gear selection will undoubtedly uh, depend on this kind of requirements. And also, I must say that the weather in Iceland is crazy winds are very strong and then there's lots of rains and then there's lots of snow and then there's lots of sunshine as well so it's really unpredictable you have to be prepared for anything anytime so your gear must be somewhat kind of rugged and ready for this kind of adventure-ish you know uh, weather <laughs> with that said uh, the cameras that i bring with me on the trip to iceland i bring Two cameras. First is the Panasonic G85 that's currently recording this video right now, as well as a secondary camera, my Panasonic GX8. So why do I have to use two cameras? Uh, it's because I want to have two lenses available at all times so I can have two different focal lengths. Uh, usually one is wide angle or wider angle focal length and the other one is usually telephoto. So if I encounter something uh, either uh, far away or near to me, I can just uh, pick up one of the two cameras and be ready for anything. The main reason why I go with Panasonic G85 and Panasonic GX8 is because I have them, I don't have to buy new cameras. But joking aside, uh, both the G85 and the Panasonic GX8, they are weather sealed. So they are prepared for uh, somewhat, you know, a surprising kind of weather that uh, we encounter during our trip in Iceland. And you know, uh, they can both handle uh, rain and wind and uh, they just doing really well on this kind of environment. Other micro photos cameras such as the uh, OM1, the new GH6 or the older GH5 or something like that, uh, as long as they're weather sealed, I think they will be good enough for an Iceland trip. They can handle the weather, they can handle the rain and they'll be fine. And you know, because I'm using micro photos cameras, I'm saving lots of weights, I'm saving lots of you know, uh, space in my uh, travel bag. So, uh, you know, I can carry more lenses and still be under the seven kilogram weight limit. Both of the Panasonic G85 and the GX8, they shoot incredible 
photographs uh, i think i don't need anything more than that although i want something that's more you know uh higher resolution let's say 24 megapixel or something but even with the 16 megapixel sensor of the g85 i think it's more than good enough for a uh, digital viewing in my phone if i want to send it to email to view on my computer as well uh, it's just more than good enough and same story with the gx8 uh, this one has a slightly uh, bigger megapixel this one is 20 megapixel although it is still micro four thirds camera and the image quality is just amazing and a uh, bonus point the g85 also records incredible b-roll videos you can check out the b-roll videos on my vlogs and i will share a few uh, on this video as well so you can see uh, what i mean by the incredible b-rolls Speaking about camera settings, I usually shoot in full manual. So I have full control of my ISO, my shutter speed, and my aperture. So I can perfectly nail the exposure as I want it to be. And I don't have to rely on the camera's metering system. Although the metering system on both the G85 and the GX8 are great. And however, if I'm shooting wildlife, uh, on Reykjavik, uh, we have a chance to uh, do whale watching tour and shoot some uh, whales as well as puffin birds. I usually switch to shutter priority and just let the camera decide the ISO and the aperture by itself. So I usually uh, switch to shutter priority and then I will crank up the shutter speed to about a thousandth of a second or something like that. So it's a high enough shutter speed to capture the movement of the puffin birds or the whale. Now let's talk quickly about lenses. So for this Iceland trip, I brought about four lenses in total. I brought the 14 to 140 super zoom uh, by Panasonic, and then I also brought the 12 to 35 millimeter f 2.8, and then I also brought the Lawa 7.5 millimeter f 2 ultra wide angle lens, and also for the whale watching and for puffin, I brought the 100 to 300 millimeter ultra telephoto lens. I originally planned to bring at least one prime lens that has large aperture and moderate wide angle focal length such as the lens that's recording this video right now, the Panasonic Leica 15mm or the Panasonic 20mm but I ended up not bringing them because I think uh, they're a little bit redundant with my 12 to 35 and also we don't encounter a lot of low light situation because uh, the daytime uh, uh, during our Iceland trip is already longer compared to the previous months and uh, we don't have sunset until about 9 or 10 p.m. every day. So yeah, I ended up teaching not bringing the prime and uh, I don't regret it at all. So now let's start with the uh, main lens that I use the most, the 14 to 140 millimeter. So yeah, the 14 to 140 millimeter is the lens that I use the most. I am really grateful that I brought this lens and this lens performed wonderfully. I'm able to capture anything from moderate wide angle all the way to about ultra telephoto. So this is very useful in Iceland because uh, most of the time when you visit an attraction or if you are in the town or if you are, uh, you know, uh, encountering wildlife or something like that, you're not quite sure yet uh, what focal lengths that you will use. So having a lens that can go from wide to ultra telephoto like this really helps a lot. And yeah, this is uh, the lens that I use the most in Iceland for recording bureaus, for photography. It's sharp enough, uh, I think, compared to my other lens, uh, it's not so bad. I mean, uh, it's already sharp enough for most of my needs, so I'm not complaining. The B-rolls captured using this lens is already great looking, and I'm just happy that I bring this lens with me on my Iceland trip. One problem, or maybe two, two problems with this lens is that uh, it's not weather sealed, uh, so you have to be really careful with this lens. I experienced a little bit of fogging uh, inside the uh, front element of this lens uh, due to moisture and then temperature change uh, because I brought it near waterfalls and the waterfall sprays into the lens and then the lens get uh, wet and moisture uh, 
get inside into the front element of the lens. So that's a problem in Iceland. So I really recommend if you can get the version 2 of this lens, the 14 to 140 Mark II, I think that one is a uh, weather sealed and it is more capable for uh, handling the elements, especially moisture and water in Iceland. And then the second problem is the lack of large aperture on this lens. This lens only goes to f5.6 at 140mm and then at 14 it only goes to f3.5. So it's not large enough. So uh, if you encounter low light situation, this lens might not gonna cut it. You have to uh, use other lens that has larger aperture. Second lens that I use the most is the Lawa 7.5mm f2. Unsurprisingly, this get used a lot uh, because it's Iceland. There's lots of opportunities for landscape photography, for waterfall photography. This is just great. And then I also put uh, this adapter ring uh, so that I can use filters, especially ND filters, to get that silky smooth looking long exposure waterfall shot using this lens. And yeah, with the combination of large aperture of f2, I can also get a little bit of northern light. We encountered a little bit of northern light when we were in Snafflesness Peninsula and it's just great. Although it's a weak one, we can kind of see it like a mist moving in the air, <laughs> something like that. And I'm glad that I brought this lens and I can capture the northern light using this lens. There are two problems with this lens as well. First, also this is not weather sealed, although I haven't encountered any fogging inside the uh, front elements of the lens. Uh, I'm just a little bit worried every time I use this lens. And then second problem is that this is a manual focus only lens. There's no autofocus. And the manual focus in uh, in theory, it's not gonna bother you a lot because once you set it up to hyperfocal, it'll just shoot anything sharp between uh, four to five meters in front of you all the way until infinity. However, uh, in reality, when I store this lens inside my bag and then it gets, you know, banged up with other lenses or into the uh, inner lining of the bag, uh, the focus gets you know, moving a little bit and, you know, uh, by the time you are shooting, you kind of forgot to readjust the manual focus ring right here and then you ended up with blurry shots and that's just irritating. <laughs> and yeah, I happen to have a missed shot uh, from this lens and that is the most iconic shot uh, the uh, Kirkjufell mountain with the Kirkjufell Foss waterfall shot. I misfocused this lens. It was kind of, you know, uh, rotated a little bit to the left. So it's only focusing on the nearest part of the picture and the mountain itself is blurry. I'll show the picture here, but you'll get what I mean. And that's just mm, <laughs> makes me a little bit angry. However, I got some backup shots from this lens as well before the lens gets touched, uh, before the focus ring moves. So I still have the shot that I want, but just keep that in mind. Okay, and then the next uh, problem with this lens is that it cannot zoom. This is a prime lens. So if you're encountering something that's a little bit far away or a little bit smaller and you need to zoom, uh, it's not going to do it. You have to switch lens to the 14 millimeter in my case, or, uh, you know, uh, you don't really have any other choice. Next lens that get used a lot is the 100 to 300 millimeter ultra telephoto lens by Panasonic. I'm kind of surprised uh, with this lens because I thought, oh, I'm not going to use it a lot. I already have the 14 to 140 and it goes all the way to 140 and maybe that's more than enough. But in reality, there are a few times um, where I take out this lens from my camera bag and I was able to photograph a distant landscape photography, especially glaciers, volcanoes, mountains, waterfalls that are far away and we don't have time to visit. So yeah, I'm really thankful that I brought this lens. And also besides the distant landscape photography, this is great for wildlife. If you're whale watching, bring this lens. Uh, 300 is not enough. Uh, you, you need something that's longer, but this is all that I have and you have to, uh, 
be able to capture it with whatever you have. And also for puffin photography, if the puffin is far away, because when we arrive there, apparently the puffin is not in season yet, although they're supposed to be. And we have to visit the puffins uh, during whale watching tour and they're on the water far away from the ship. So I have to zoom all the way to 300 millimeter. And yeah, this lens perform really great in that matter. There's a problem with the 100 to 300 millimeter lens though, and that is the autofocus. So I use this lens a lot for moon photography and then for uh, distant landscape photography, but I haven't really used it for a uh, real serious wildlife like uh, I did in Iceland. So when I encountered uh, the whales during whale watching tour and the puffins, that was my first time using it for real uh, wildlife photography and the autofocus really struggled. It performed really bad and I was just, you know, uh, frustrated by it many times, especially when I uh, already captured the picture and then I look at the gallery and I saw that the picture is not in focus at all. That's just mm, makes me a little bit frustrated. However, I was able to uh, recapture the object many times, especially puffin birds and the whales. So I got a few that's already in focus and I'm quite happy with them. But yeah, uh, regarding the 100 to 300 millimeter, although it performed really good, the image quality is more than good enough. Uh, the focus could be a problem. Next lens is the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f 2.8. So before I went to Iceland, I thought to myself that uh, this will be another most used lens uh, during the Iceland trip. However, in reality, when I brought it to Iceland, I don't use it as much as I thought I would be. I mean, I use it a few times. I use it uh, when I was in Reykjavik city, when I was visiting the Hallgrim's church, when I was visiting some museums, I was using this lens. But other than that, I don't really use this lens at all. <laughs> it was just neglected inside my camera bag. Now, this lens is not bad at all. I made a lot of videos in the past about this lens and how I really love this lens for travel photography and for general out and about photography, how the large aperture is really helping me and how the zoom range, although it's not really as great as the 14 to 140, it is still more than good enough for most of my needs. And it is still true. However, with Iceland, you cannot really expect anything because uh, it'll be all surprising to you, you know. Everything will be spontaneous, the weather will be spontaneous, the subjects that you will ph photograph, um, you cannot really tell if it's gonna be wide angle or telephoto. And the range of the 12 to 35 millimeter is a little bit limiting. 35 is not really telephoto yet, and 12 is almost similar to 14. So I will choose 14 to 140 and yeah. If I go to Iceland again, I will not probably bring the 12 to 35 millimeter f 2.8, except if I'm visiting in a uh, darker times, uh, maybe in winter where there's not a lot of daytime, uh, when the sun sets earlier and the sun rises later. So maybe this will be useful. But other than that, most of the time, 14 to 140 millimeter is my choice for that kind of focal length. Now I want to talk a little bit about my non micro four thirds cameras that I bring to the Iceland trip. Now first let's talk about this little guy right here. This is the Insta360 Go To. If you're a subscriber of my channel, you already know what is this. And this is a little action camera, uh, almost like a GoPro, but it's smaller and also it cannot shoot 4K. However, it is still waterproof and you can submerge it inside water. So this little camera has been very useful for me because I record a lot of wide angle b-rolls using this camera and I was usually walking to the front or I was sweeping the camera and I got the b-roll shot that I wanted. And you know, because the camera is small, it is lightweight, it's easy to carry around. It really aligns with my philosophy for a travel camera. So this gets used a lot. This is also a great conversation starter because when I was recording b-rolls uh, during my Iceland trip, I was usually doing something like this or I'm walking with the camera in front of my head and then people will uh, approach me and they will ask questions. What is that? Uh, is that for recording video? And usually this is a great conversation starter and then this is a great way for you to make new friends and I'm really glad for that. 
and uh, the image quality i think it's more than good enough for you know uh, travel videos for personal vlogs something like that if you watch my vlogs i will link it up here uh, one of the vlogs that use this guy a lot and it's been really wonderful and this is also water submersible as i mentioned before so you can uh, record inside water so this is really useful when i was snorkeling in the silfra fisher i can uh, use it underwater and record everything during the whole snorkeling session and it performed just wonderfully one problem with the insta 360 go 2 is that it doesn't have any kind of screen for framing so you just have to uh, do it by feel you know you cannot really aim it uh, precisely so you have to ballpark it and oftentimes i will miss a little bit of something in the frame because i wasn't able to properly frame my composition so that's a little bit of a problem however you can connect it to your smartphone wirelessly and then you can uh, use your smartphone as the uh, uh, monitor uh, however i didn't really do that because it's just a little bit cumbersome for me so i prefer to just ballpark it every time and you know just trying to uh, do my best to capture the whole composition that i want next non micro photos camera that i brought during this trip is this guy right here this is the dji pocket 2 so this is a video camera with built-in gimbal on it so it can record really smooth stable video footage and i use this specifically for uh, air roll shots for talking headshots uh, if i'm talking to the camera uh, it'll be this guy right here so if you see on my vlogs i'm talking to the camera then it will be the dji pocket 2 speaking of the image quality it is more than good enough for me for my talking head shots I, at least it gets the job done and it's not grainy and it's sharp it's it's more than good enough for me it's comparable to my micro four thirds video footage and uh, they can blend together really well speaking of audio i ended up not using external microphones with this camera simply because i want it to be hassle free when i travel i want the camera to figure out the audio by itself and just not worry about audio the result is not perfect uh, especially when you compare it to my audio setup right now with a shotgun microphone boomed on me it's just sound uh, okay in my opinion i can improve it uh, with post processing although not by much but it gets the job done as i said before however if there are lots of noise uh, especially wind noise or if i'm in a noisy environment lots of other people talking i will switch to uh, this uh, wireless microphone uh, that comes together with the dji pocket 2 from the creator combo package so i can just clip it on my shirt turn it on and start talking and it can help reduce the noise uh, especially wind noise uh, unless you're in a real noisy real windy environment like uh, when we were in Kerit crater in iceland uh, that was really windy the wind is just crazy and even this microphone cannot handle it so yeah that's about it with the dji pocket 2. next let's talk about some accessories so first accessories that i want to talk about is tripod i cannot really show you my tripod right now but i will show some b-rolls and my tripod that i brought with me to iceland is the surui travel tripod uh the blue one if you're a current subscriber of my channel you might already know which one i'm talking about and with it i use the ulan z ball head and it's been really great uh, the tripod's not too heavy although it's aluminum and not carbon fiber it uh, can handle the situation really well especially if you're doing long exposure photography or if you if you want to capture uh, a photo of yourself uh, in my case with my wife so i can just stand away from the camera and use the timer and then it will just handle uh, that really well however there are some problems that i encounter in iceland especially regarding to winds no matter how sturdy your tripod is no matter how good your tripod is wind is going to be a problem in iceland so if you're doing long exposure photography my tips for you is try to adjust the shutter speed to the fastest shutter speed uh, that's possible you know still long enough to get that silky smooth water uh, that you're aiming for or to get that silky smooth sky that you're aiming for however make it as quick as possible 
um, usually not more than uh, two or three seconds because uh, more than that, uh, shakiness is going to be problem. It's going to be apparent in your image, although you're doing your best uh, to hold the tripod to put some weights on it or anything like that. It's just a problem for me. So I want to uh, mention that. And also speaking about uh, long exposure photography, uh, I also brought with me uh, filters, especially ND filters. Some of them are by uh, K and F concept, and then some of them is by Surui. Uh, this guy right here is an ND64. Uh, so I can get down to about a third of a second or a fifth of a second to get that nice silky smooth waterfall uh, without, um, you know, dragging the shutter for too long because anything more than two seconds, as I mentioned earlier, will get too blurry because of the wind. And the other one is ND1000. This is uh, if you are sure that there's not a lot of winds and you're sure that uh, you're really stable and you can nail longer exposure than ND1000 is really great as well. This one is also equipped with um, polarizer so that you can uh, kind of get that polarizing effect in the water, on the sky, especially if you're using longer lens. Speaking of accessories, I also bring a dedicated camera bag. I thought I don't really need a camera bag. Uh, I can just use my backpack and use uh, camera clips on the straps of my backpacks. However, that is not true. When I arrive in Iceland, I almost always use my uh, camera bag instead of my backpack to carry my camera equipment. And I brought with me the Billingham Hadley Small because it is compact enough to carry two camera bodies without the bulk and without looking uh, weird and without the weight, you know, it's just perfect. It's just small enough. It's just lightweight enough, but it still protects your gear. And there's a lot of space for two cameras and three lenses. Now let's talk about the accessory that I didn't use at all. And it's this contraption right here. This is my off camera flash freak for shooting off camera flash. I thought I will be patient enough to use this rig to photograph me and my wife uh, on a landscape or something like that and just, you know, uh, prop this up on a rock or something and use the tripod feet to make it stable. However, in Iceland, because of the crazy wind, uh, this will not work at all because this is not stable enough because the tripod feet are not wide enough and they're not stable. This will surely fall and there'll be a problem for me. So this ended up not being used at all. I tried my best to use natural lighting all of the time. It is not always possible to use natural lighting in Iceland, especially uh, if you're not coming to the uh, attraction at the right time of the day, you'll get backlight situation and that's just a problem for you. So in that case, you just have to deal with it and, you know, try your best to salvage the image or just make it uh, into a silhouette and turn your subject into, you know, total black and then uh, keep the landscape uh, to uh, properly exposed or something like that. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that you find this video to be useful. Please comment down below if you have any questions about uh, camera gears or lenses, especially if you want to bring it to Iceland. Also, don't forget to support my small channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. It will really help me a ton to motivate me to keep making these videos for you. Thank you and goodbye.